The electricity company of Ghana has recently faced a series of significant challenges that have raised concerns about its operations and overall efficiency. Issues related to procurement and contract disputes have drawn public attention, highlighting possible inefficiencies in the company's supply chain management. Additionally, in 2022, ECG was hit by a ransomware attack that caused considerable financial losses and raised questions about its cybersecurity infrastructure. The company's financial struggles were further underscored by a reported 1.9 billion CD loss in 2021, a large part of which was attributed to forex losses. However, this explanation has been met with skepticism by financial analysts who are questioning whether exchange rate fluctuations alone could account for such a significant deficit. These and more we unpack in this edition of Hot Issues. I am Kemeni Amano, and in this edition, I sit with the man who has courted public displeasure, even as he attempts to turn the fortunes of ECG for the better. Public frustration, particularly around concerns of overcharging and the inaccuracies of prepaid meters, have led to widespread customer dissatisfaction and placed ECG under intense scrutiny. With the public eager to understand the company's strategies for addressing these pressing issues and ensuring better service delivery. Will he have the answers you seek? My guest today is Managing Director of ECG, Samuel Dubik Mahama. You're welcome to Hot Issues. Thank you. I want us to begin with the current situation. What exactly is going on with the meter replacement that is causing a lot of displeasure among your customers? The issue at stake now is the fact that, let me start from the very, very top. Mm -hmm. You know, meters do expire. Meters do get obsolete. When we started this prepaid metering uh, agenda in 2003, there should have been a backup plan for replacement of meters every 10 years to 15 years. So it has caught up with us. Right now, we do not have a choice, but some meters just have to be, they've, they've exhausted their shelf life. For example, you, you do hear some people complaining that their meters have gone into the negative. They've been paying, they've been paying, they've been buying, they've been buying credits. But all of a sudden, now they owe an amount of 30 or 40 And it's because the meter has expired. The meter is not working well. It's oh, gone obsolete. Is it only here in Ghana? Because I've not heard anywhere before that yes. meters expire. It depends on where you've lived before. Okay. Because I have experienced it before. And we also have uh, service level agreements with the metering companies, which made them... We were aware. And even the, there's an ally with the PURC okay. that mandates the ECG to replace meters after every 10 years. After every 10 years. Because, you know, meters also evolve just like the cell phone. For example, the old meters are mechanical in nature. And them being mechanical is also a source of loss of revenue because something like charging your phone, if it doesn't read beyond a certain amp, it doesn't capture into the meter. But luckily for us, with these new meters, it's every single thing that is consumed or you leave the plug on in your home means that what? You're consuming. So actually, the other thing that these new meters are exposing is that we have to go back to the old conversation of energy conservation. Mm, I see. So how do we explain the fact that nearly every year we cover meter replacement when you tell us that the expiration is 10 to 15 years? Every year we don't cover meter replacements. No, we cover. As, as news people, we hear you say that you're going we, on we don't, so, so meter far, replacement programs. No, no, no. For the longest time, the issue has been we don't have a meter. We don't get a meter. I have paid for meter for months. I haven't been served. That has been the conversation. But Hasn't well, that? well, there has also been the conversation about people having their meters so already. You have, there are and, categories. Oh, on, people having their meters already and being given new ones. There are categories of people who ask for replacement meters. Okay. Someone whose meter is bent. Someone whose meter is not working well. But with this particular exercise is that we have identified over a million plus meters that are overage and are not performing well. Mm. One of the things about digitizing is that it brings out your inefficiencies. Because every metering software speaks to a system. And with that, you would know whether the meter is performing well, the person is purchasing or not. 
Don't forget, with these old meters, whenever there's a tariff change, you're supposed to shoot the tariff change into the meter by the software. But if the meter is obsolete and you shoot the, the tariff, what happens? It will not receive it. Mm. So there are people in the system now who are operating on old tariffs. Because the system has been digitalized, is that what you're saying? No, you're not getting it. No, yes, I don't. So listen carefully. When you digitize a system, mm -hmm. it will bring out your inefficiencies. Okay. Currently, what the digitization has pointed out to ECG is that our inefficiency is in metering. Because you are not able to your, give your customers the right meter to bill and to receive the right amount of money that is due the company. Do you get it now? I get what you're saying. But where it sits in the, re the reality or the experiences of people today is what I don't understand. You're saying that uh, the meter that I, ha I had, because I have also had a new meter, the meter that I had uh, didn't accurately measure what I consumed? Yes. Uh, how so? Because that is also a prepaid meter. But, but I just told you that just like your phone, when it runs its course and is done, it doesn't work at its optimum. So if I have installed something for you in 2003, eh? uh -huh. am I expecting it to be working very well in 2024? It, I don't expect it to be working at its optimum well, hey. best in 2024 it, because there was a warranty on the meter. Okay. The person who sold the meter to me told me about it. Don't forget, just this afternoon, government, parliament has approved under the World Bank project, the P4R which allows for about 90 million of that to be used for the purchase of meters to assist ECG. ECG, in its own way, found a project called the Loss Reduction uh -huh. Project. Under the Loss Reduction Project, we managed to shift from the regular way of doing business where we just purchase meters. And when you purchase, you, they come, they dump it on you, and they are gone. Uh -huh. Now, under the Loss Reduction Project, we're actually dealing with local companies. If you do not have a manufacturing plant, as, 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 as should be on the ground, then nobody is actually going to help you to what, sell to ECG. So I'm just walking you through the right. process so that mm -hmm. you can understand how or the kind of efficiency we are bringing into the, 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 the market. Mm -hmm. So now with these metering companies, unless they have installed the meter and the meter is reading, they don't get paid. This has helped us to I reduce see. the cost of meters by almost 50%. So if somebody sits down and says they've carried money to give to people, so because of that they are trying to do that, no. So Nobody has paid for the meters ahead. Right. So, so the, the 1 million meter replacement projects is, is, is costing it's 90, actually more 90 than, million. No. Cities. Okay. Well, how much is this uh, meter replacement costing? So now, this very beginning of the meter replacement is targeting the ones that are obsolete. We cannot say for a fact that this is how much it's costing. That is why we took the approach, the, the, the very careful approach of until it is installed and operational, mm. that is when you pay. Because guess what? Under the Know Your Customer Drive, the Kimes, we are identifying customers that are not on our network, yet they are consuming. Okay. We are trying to plug the loopholes in the system gradually and consistently. Now, under the Know Your Customer Drive, if you step out of this building, when I was coming in, I saw it. You've been tagged with a unique QR code. The QR code establishes who is in this building, what kind of meter, the last wood pole that gave you the power, the distribution transformer you are drawing from, which now allows us to be efficient when we call you to deal with you. All of these steps are showing that the company, in its way of dealing with its customers, is trying to make sure that the customer has confidence in the work that we are doing. Right. So you say that this 1 million uh, meters are obsolete. We also know that in our coverage of this exercise, we've come across customers who have told us that, look, we got these new prepaid meters recently, and they have come again and they have replaced them. It doesn't end there. They also tell us that after they replace the meters, we are either owing or we do not have what we had on before. So you see, sometimes it's always good to clarify issues. One, you cannot be given a new meter and you are owing. If you are given a new meter and you owe, that means you were on a postpaid meter. So you were naturally not paying your bills. So when you're about to be given a prepaid meter, your meter will be read digitally 
the amount you owe will be stated to you, you'll be asked, can you pay off immediately? If not, a payment plan is developed and installed in the meter so that for every single time you buy power, what happens? You'll be paying off your old debt. We do admit that those on the postpaid do not receive bills constantly. We have over 2 million postpaid meters and only 800 meter readers. The ratio is not correct. This is a pragmatic approach to close the gap and to try and move a lot of customers onto the prepaid system. But what about those who had prepaid already and have told us that despite getting the prepaid, and, and some of them have added recently, they still got these new meters? Yes, it's because the prepaid meter they had, it depends on how recent, okay. because the prepaid meter they had is not MMS compliant. Under the Millennium Challenge account and the media project, a fantastic system was developed for ECG called the MMS, okay. Meter Management System. Under this MMS, it affords you to purchase power on the meter with an STS token. So with this, if you realize, most people who purchase on the app do get a token that they key in. Mm -hmm. Now, aside that, this MMS platform allows us pure visibility and the GPS and the geocodes of the location of the meter for tampering. Because we've had people who, when you give them meters, they tamper with the meter. We've had people who try and move uh, the cables at the back of the meter. In fact, we have people who envisage that they will steal. So even when they were building their homes, they built the bypass in the walls. So you can get to a home, you are checking, only to realize that about three or four air conditions don't go through the meter. Right. So, so what, what you are then essentially saying is that you may have the prepaid, but we may still come around and change to this new smart they meter. Yeah, you have to let them check it because we are moving to an MMS compliant meter. This is because we are vigorously metering every distribution transformer. We are metering every distribution transformer to make sure that we can mm. perform proper energy accounting and audit. We need to move to the smart way of doing business rather than sticking right. to the second guessing or as they say on the streets, matri Okay. We need to close those gaps because if we don't, we'll, it will be more like every day throwing water Onto, right. onto stones. But, so, so for those who swear that they do have problems even with the new one because it's overreading them, it is, it, it is charging them what they haven't consumed. What's your explanation for that? First things first, let's beat a retreat. If you're saying it's overcharging you, one, before I get to my main point, it will be, have you checked your air thing in the house to make sure that your wiring is correct? If your wiring or the air thing in the home is bad, you would lose, it, it would be reading consumption on the, on the meter. Two, if I may ask, do you know the percentage increment in tariff right now? What is it? It's 75% plus. And there's been quarterly adjustments. So yes, the tariff is high. The tariff is high. So if you take it and you feel you are being cheated, as I said, we are ready to subject that particular meter to the Ghana, Ghana Standards Authority for them to check your meter or we will come to your home and do an energy audit with you mm. so that you know which devices stay on and why it is leading to this kind of consumption for you. In indeed. I, I want us to touch on other aspects of revenue collection br briefly, but these one million obsolete meters that you have identified, which areas you know, have you seen them the most? Where, where have, are they? We have in Accra. Mm. We have in uh, Ashanti region. We have in the Western region. The Western region where... That was the place where the whole prepaid metering piloting started in 2003. So it's scattered across, but mostly concentrated in our high earning areas. So it's an exercise that we have to do our best to complete as quickly as possible. Okay, you mentioned earlier that this exercise is helping you plug the loopholes uh, in your system. So then I, I can say that this is targeted at commercial losses? It's, it's targeted at system losses. Oh, how you so? Know, you know, when you talk about system losses, it's a combination of technical, commercial, and collection. With collection losses, it's the rate at which you're able to collect what you have built. Mm -hmm. With commercial, your processes in your office that have loopholes. And then with technical, it has to do with the, the line itself, the infrastructure, mm -hmm. how, what shortfalls are on it that are making you lose the power that you are distributing. So you cannot, you cannot isolate them in any way. As I speak to you, 
we have a report that is showing us that with these exercises and what we're doing, we have been able to bring down our losses to about 26.9%. We know it's not good for, enough. For, for which, this year? For this year. Okay. For, no, for 2023. 2023. So we are hoping that in 2024, it will be far lower. I see. When the finance, the energy minister appeared before uh, the public accounts committee, he mentioned some of the losses that you had accrued. That's why the losses coming down, they are still high. It would appear that commercial losses as compared to, again, I'm quoting him, your system losses and your uh, technical losses are not as high. If, I mean, if you compare commercial losses to those, it's not as high. But so my question then to you is, how will this target those losses directly? You see, when you appear at the public accounts, there are two things that we need to separate. Profit and loss accounting in a limited liability company is totally different from energy accounting losses. Energy accounting losses deals with what you purchased, what you sold, what you retrieved. Profit and loss accounting has what? Forex losses in it. No, this is, this, this is purely without Forex because he talks about the system losses. You have explained what those system losses yes. are. He talks about technical losses. He, he also talked about commercial losses. He's not talking about the entire business as a whole, and we'll go there. But so, so let's look at these losses that you have control over. Okay. This exercise that you are embarking on, yeah. how will it target those things directly? Let's start so, off with the system so, losses. So, so for the very first thing that you need to realize is that if you are not billing well, mm -hmm. that means you are not collecting well. So if you're able to build cor cor correctly, uh -huh. you can collect well. So the whole conversation now of with this metering exercise that we are doing is to afford us the opportunity, one, that in areas where we were supposed to have like mostly prepaid meters, if there's any postpaid meter there, it is off the shelf. When you, you, a person has a postpaid meter, he doesn't frequently what? Pay. So that would eliminate and give you money in, on time. Uh -huh. Secondly... Those whose meters have been what spoiled for some time now are being replaced, or those who have been bent have been replaced. And then now the ones that are not efficient are also what being given efficient meters. So definitely, definitely, with you completing a very good amount of it being installed, you should see an increment in revenue. So obviously, we can tell that uh, you know you. It brings me back to the point, really, that I think that this exercise is targeted, targeted at reducing your commercial losses. And the commercial losses don't make a chunk of the losses that you, you experience. Yeah. Yeah. So, so why, why are you but going... I, I, I no, no, wait. system losses no, commercial. On. Why, why <laughs> do you go after the... I mean, consistently, ECG appears to be going after the low-hanging low fruit of, uh, you know, losses when it could actually deal with some of the big things like fixing its network. So the truth of the matter is, if I don't fix those losses to make money, how do I fix the network? I need money. That's the whole system rides on money. But it sounds like you're rationalizing it. You're spending money to, to be able to fix these Definitely, commercial Definitely, but that's a business. That's how you run a business. To run a business, you need money to run a business. And if you've been given a business where you are to, you, you are to sell and collect, if you don't sell and collect, you can't put anything back in the system. Do not forget, what we sell and collect under the cash waterfall system is how IPPs are paid. It's how the other SOEs, the VRAs, the GRIDCOs, the PURCs, the, 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 the Ghana Gas, the GMPCs, everybody has their allocation under cash waterfall. So we have to find a way to close the gap to make the whole system whole because we are at the bottom of the food chain. The responsibility is on us to fix the problem. So... What is the plan to deal with the other losses not related to selling of your of your power? Which is the profit? Uh, which, the which, which is, for foreign, instance, for, for, uh, no, we we'll deal with forex, but which yeah. is, for instance, your network that needs uh, you know upgrade, upgrade perhaps. So it's your it's transformers. From, so it's from the revenue that what is allocated to us under the cash waterfall is what we are going to use to fix that. That's what I'm saying. It's a holistic approach. If we do not raise enough money, we will not get enough money to fix it. You know, and the funny thing is that these are operational, these are not operational expenses. These are capital expenditure. Mm -hmm. Until ECG is a company that has not been capitalized since 2007. All these new reforms that you've been seeing for the past two years since I've been in office have been us trying to be creative mm -hmm. in using our operational expenditure okay. to close the gaps. So we all we do need is a is a is a is a is a 
It's a conversation around the whole table saying that, hey, you cannot be doing this anymore. This is the capital expenditure that needs to be put in. Value this, value that, and let's, let's talk around the big table to find that kind of money to solve some of these uh, technical issues. I see. And, and when you say that you haven't been capitalized in the, in the while, how do you mean? I mean, let's say, for example, when prepaid metering started, government's plan was to look for some huge capital money for us to, to replace all meters to prepaid mm. and then declare the postpaid meters obsolete. Mm -hmm. Guess what? It was truncated at some point. So at this, as we speak, we have 50% of our meters postpaid, the other 50 are prepaid. So until there's a vigorous or a deliberate attempt to make sure that the whole country is what prepaid. You know, whenever you talk, everybody's going like, the easiest way is just buy them prepaid meters. Where do we get the money from? We need to, it's either we better our collections mm. and use that money to replace those meters or there's a capitalization conversation around the table where a proper financial plan is drawn, aimed at what? Deliberately attacking the, the metering phenomenon. My guest uh, today on Hot Issues is Samuel Dubik Mahama. He is Managing Director for Electricity Company of Ghana. You're watching Hot Issues. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Hot Issues. We're still here with MD of ECG, Samuel Dubik Mahama. Mr. Mahama, thank you so much for uh, sitting with us. You mentioned that a, a conversation around capitalization needs to be had because government has not capitalized you for a long time. And so I look at your, um, your financial accounts for ending year 2022. Uh, from the Auditor General's report, I see government grants, GOG payments. What does that mean? So those are payments that have been made to the IPPs. Okay. So independent power producers have been paid, and we have found a way to put them in our balance sheet for it to make sense. That's Th all. Those are not monies that come in to say support ECG. They go directly to the IPP. Those I monies see. are not paid to ECG for ECG to onward pay the IPPs. Mm. Those government payments are all paid directly from government to the IPP. So when was the last time ECG received any capitalization support? That was in uh, 2007. And that was under uh, a French government uh, program. You don't say? Yes. And, and obviously that could explain why you have some of these losses through your network. Because again, people don't understand that when you, when you buy your electricity and you don't sell it, you're losing. Exactly. What we, what, what, the question here is, we don't gain anything by not giving you the electricity. Because mm -hmm. let's say, for example, you have take or pay agreements with the IPP. Your job is to sell. Mm -hmm. So it's not in our interest to deny you the, the, the sale of that uh, electricity or not to give you electricity. Right. Even worse, we purchase the electricity in dollars and then sell in CDs. Mm -hmm. So you, at some point, you need to get more CDs to get what? Some dollars. So the business dynamic is something that is, 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 is a conversation that we need to be deliberate about. I mean, but what, what would it take to have ECG buy power in cities? It will take the IPPs understanding that this is what you want to do. But the mm -hmm. conversation now is this. They also have lenders. People lent them the money in US dollars to do this. Mm -hmm. So what are you now going to tell them that they should change the whole conversation back to Ghana cities? Mm -hmm. Initially... When they were those PPAs or power purchase agreements were being agreed upon, they, that was where you should have spoken about going into cities. But right. you know our currency situation. Everybody prefers to hold it in the U.S. dollar to make sure that the lenders or the international banks will find the business profitable enough to invest in. Losses as a result of non-use is what, what brings me to the question as to why we will be retargeting the people who are already on the grid instead of expanding so that you would have people using and paying for your electricity. So that is why now we are doing the KY, the Know Your Customer Drive. Okay. We are identifying people that are on the grid that we never even knew of. I keep saying this. Areas like Chado, Oyarifa, Amasama, Midye, uh, Committee 25 have grown at a very fast rate that people have joined the grid with no recourse to ECG, thanks to their own electricians. If it hadn't been for our issues in uh, uh, Krobo, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have known that average people could actually put customers on a transformer without not turning the, customer or the transformer off. We, 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 are, we are in a business where we are always playing catch-up. 
but we are at a point where we realize that no, we need to be a few steps what ahead, and that's are the reforms that we are doing now. Right. So, so that is for people who are illegally enjoying your electricity and not paying. But I'm saying that if you buy and you don't sell, the electricity will not wait for you to sell. Yeah. Will, you know, you've yeah, already paid gone. for it. It's gone. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, why are we not targeting also people who do not have electricity? Make sure that they have and then they are paying. Instead of spending all our money, keep changing prepaid meters for people. So let me tell you something. When you're expanding the grid, okay. it's a business conversation. Everybody wants electricity. But with all sincere respect and apologies, I just want to say this. The money you will get probably in an easily gone home, it's not the same that you would get in probably a San Gregoire. Or maybe in a, what do you call it? Be, uh, which, which area should I use? Let's just say you go into rural Ghana. In the low-income area. Yes. So mm -hmm. you want to expand to the low-income area. At what cost? With energy or power, the first thing you need to look at is power, the security, energy security. Mm -hmm. When you've secured it in areas where you can generate the revenue, that is when what? You expand into areas that are low-earning uh, areas for you mm -hmm. to what? Re recoup whatever you need to recoup because don't forget even with meters nobody when you hear people say i bought a meter i bought a meter you never buy a meter a meter is part of a service connection mm -hmm. we are to recoup that money over a period of time if you go and put a meter in a certain area away from uh, urban, Ga uh, uh, urban ghana you're not going to recoup that meter uh, cost within a short space of time you recoup it over a longer period of time so these are all business decisions that we have to take and make sure mm -hmm. that in expanding the grid, in as much as we want to do it very fast, you have to be a bit meticulous and make some very uh, good business decisions while we are doing it. I that. see. Is ECG a profitable business? I believe so. How it so? is. Also, when you are recording over 10 billion CDs in losses. That's profit and loss accounting that you are doing now. But uh, 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 no, a no. chunk of it has nothing to do with ECG. Oh, how so? It's, no, because, no. it's because, you know, when you are, when you are doing your P&L, your profit and loss accounting, mm -hmm. you must determine how the foreign exchange or Forex has affected your trade. Okay. You understand? That is what is accounting for that kind of gap. Mm, I see. But, and that's why I want us to explain what we are seeing here. Yeah. Because your income, total income came, came to about 15 billion CDs. Yes. On, on average, you think that is good. Yeah. But as, the moment we look at your expenditure, which came to about 25 billion, yeah. now we are thinking, why are you spending so much beyond your means? Do, do we sell transformers in CDs? But how many transformers have you bought? So how many transformers did you buy in 2022? Transformers, our total transformer number on the ground is 35,000. And, and you bought wait, all of them. Wait, wait, okay, wait, I'm waiting. No, no. I'm listening. We, you have to replace some or you have to inject more when the customer numbers are growing. I am not saying we bought all. What I am trying to point out to you is that if you go into our expenditure, most of our expenditure is not in Ghana cities. Most of our, our inputs into making the distribution network stable are priced in U.S. dollars. Okay. You can't build a substation in U.S. dollars. You can't buy a transformer priced... You can't, you can't build a substation in Ghana City. Most of the components are priced in U.S. dollars. Okay, so, so let's look at the expenditure for 2022, which is way higher than 2021. Um, we have direct costs of 16 billion, yeah. billion CDs, uh, distribution expenses of six, 612 million CDs, um, administrative expenses of over 980 million cities. Um, finance costs of 231. Which one was the highest? 31, oh no, hang on, I'm coming there. 231 million cities. And net exchange loss of 6 billion cities, right? And so what you have just said is already captured here. Yes. By your direct cost, 16 billion is... is so my, di my direct cost, uh -huh. do you know what the di that direct cost Talk to is? us about it's that. IPP. It's IPP. fuel. That's the cost of fuel to generate electricity. For mm -hmm. When the cost of production goes up, when the cost of producing electricity goes up, right. it also affects, that's my direct cost. That is where I get everything to start my journey. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to those things, you look at what the cost of fuel within that period. What's the cost of gas? What's the cost of liquid fuel into the generation of the electricity that we have now? Those, that is what would determine what your direct costs are. 
before you come down to what you are expending and what you are doing as a company as a whole. What could government be doing now to help ECG? The Go current government, the government to come? Government has been doing a lot already by assisting ECG with their IPP payments. This government has also been doing a lot with assisting ECG in addressing some of its forex losses and how to manage some of its taxes. Because they've managed to allow us to, to do some very good set-offs in the taxes uh, enclave, which has allowed us to balance our books very well. So and I think we can build on this. Or there could be a lasting solution. Yes, there can be. We need to build on this and get a group of formidable people around the table mm. to have a financial model solution because this, this the energy sector or the power sector's problem is a financial model problem, uh, which is what we are fixing as we speak. But until you do the basics or you correct the basics, you cannot develop the model as is. I see. Which means that since we haven't corrected the basis, even this money you will be spending on the meter replacement will only uh, you know, fix a fraction of the problem. But the thing is, you have some expiring. You have some, uh, what do you call it? You have some developing whatever issues. Okay. So it will fix most of it, not just a fraction. At this rate, ECG is not a profitable business. That, is that your opinion or the opinion of the of that, the I Auditor mean, General? Based, because based on what is on the paper. But if you do the profit and loss accounting, what, that, what did they say? No, but if this was your business and you... So no, what did they say on. the no, net no, profit no, was? No, hang on. No, hang before... On. There's something I, I, to say I, on the I, they I say don't, I don't have net no profit. Lie. I don't have no, net profit here. Ah. You uh, I can no, I can read the financial performance if mm. you want me to. It says the company ended the year with a loss of ten billion uh, uh, Ghana cities as compared with a loss of one billion in the year before. Yes, uh, and it says that it represents a deterioration of four hundred and thirty. So ten billion. How much of that ten billion was caused by directly through ECG's operations? Six billion of that was what. Forex. No, it had nothing to do with the I, company. No, I, I have, I have heard that, right? I have heard that. What I'm saying is that at this rate, whatever the explanation is, ECG is not a profitable business. I, and I'm telling you, that's wrong. You are making money, but it's going into your expenses. Of course, but the thing is this: I told you, but through some government interventions, uh -huh. we didn't declare that we are not profitable. Through government, some government interventions, you, we are profitable. Well, you didn't declare, but your paper doesn't say that you are. They, they, that's why I said, what was the net profit? There is no net profit uh -huh. here. We have your total income. I know, I know your this total document, I would, I, would, I, would, I would appreciate you get the full document and take a closer look at it. Because I answered questions, questions on this at the well, public I, accounts. I, 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 I could keep going, but unfortunately, we don't have the time for that. Uh, but I, I don't see that anywhere. It talks about your total expenditure, your total income, which they admit has gone up. But if your expenditure has also gone up by 80%, while your income by 24.1%, you are not so a then, profitable business. So then before, before, before we conclude, and even let's say I will agree to your statement, before we conclude, and me agreeing to your statement, let's look at the whole picture of the value chain. Mm -hmm. What, what, from what you just read, what does it depict? It depicts that what? You cannot look at what? The profit and loss account to determine the performance of what? A utility. I, I, no, I, what me, it tells let, me. I, no, no, let me land my point. Okay. You can't you can juxtapose the profit and loss accounting to the performance of a utility company. And so in that case, it brings me back to what I told you earlier, that the conversation around the power sector is what? Financials. Mm -hmm. And the financial model needs to be developed to address what? These issues. I see. Until that is done, where are we going? I'll let you have the last word on that. <laughs> but let's, speaking of the IPPs, let's talk about these IPPs. We know the finance minister had said that four of them had, had agreed to a haircut. Uh, subsequently, it was reviewed to five because I think one of the companies had an extra. Um, but we know there are two more. What's the, what's the situation with the other two who are not agreed yet? As I speak to you now, we are still negotiating. It's been uh, back and forth. But I must say a big thank you to all the IPPs for sitting around the table with us to even consider this at this time. Um, we really appreciate them. They are, not, they are development partners. The other two that is left is still conversations. We are still going on to agree on a few parameters and dynamics. And I think right after that is done. What's the hold up? Fine. The hold up is just all these things, you know, they are negotiations. Okay. Give and take, give and take. Until finally you get to a common ground. So you can't treat all of them to the same. All of them have different lenders. All of them came into Ghana under different circumstances and different situations. Okay. So we need to give them the benefit of the doubt for them to finish the conversations with their, with their lenders 
and also get back to us. So you can finish talking to them. They have to go back, speak to their teams out there, and then come mm -hmm. back. So we are just going through the processes. So outside of the, you know, the other four, uh, what is our debt level right now? Right now, I cannot say off the top of my head, but I can provide it later for you. But I would say it's less than a, it's, it's quite less than a billion. I if see. it is a based, billion dollars or CD? a billion dollars. Okay. If it is based on the renegotiated that we have, is is quite less. It's less than. When was the last time you made payments to them? We make payments to them on a monthly basis, and that's aside the government uh, lump sum payments that they make to them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the ECG also had a difficulty following the cash waterfall mechanism. Uh, uh, why did you have that difficulty? How have you managed to deal with that? So that difficulty comes in uh, two forms. One is having to plug the forex hole on a monthly basis for the IPPs. Because, you know, the agreements that mostly have been reached with them on a monthly basis, we have to pay them in U.S. dollars. You have to take a lot of the CDs that you've gathered to what, get the, the, the dollars for them. Then now come, brings you to the side where ACG was also asked to purchase some amount of fuel mm -hmm. for, for, for what you call it for power generation those were the shortfalls that created uh, are not being able to to be in line with the cash waterfall mm, i see i want to take a quick break when i come back we will have the conversation about finance costs yeah. and then also talk about some of the vulnerabilities we have experienced in the last year or two don't go away Welcome back. You're live here on Hot Issues. My guest is MD for ECG, Samuel Dubik Mahama. We've been talking about the books of ECG. We've been looking at other matters that have to do with your metering at home. And, and uh, thank you so much, Mr. Mahama, for thank your you. patience. Uh, you know, let's talk about this administrative cost, which seems to have gone to up to about a billion, okay. uh, you know, CDs at this point. Why is your administrative cost so high? Administrative cost has to deal with um, how you run the company. First of all, it has to do with your salaries. Uh -huh. Secondly, it has to do with fuel for the cars that we use in, uh, what do you call it, in our operations. And uh, mostly training for the staff and other nitty-gritties that would make sure that the office runs smoothly. And then also sometimes for, uh, what do you call it, for um, ex- uh, what do you call it? Mostly staff training. Mm, I see. Don't you think that's a bit too high? That's why I was trying to explain by saying that we have a monthly salary bill of, let's say, 90 million. Our administrative cost there was about how much? On the paper is what? It's about nine, almost a billion. Almost a billion. Mm -hmm. So if we are doing 90 million Ghana cities for, and, 12, uh, months. for 12 months, that's about how much? 90 million for 12 months. That's about 900 million, thereabouts. Yes. But 90 million CDs for uh, how many staff across the we country? Have, we have about 7,000 staff across I the see. Republic. I see. Yes. I, I, want, I want us to get... There are some permanent and there are some, uh, what do you call it, uh, contract staff. Mm, I see. Very well. Uh, and then your finance cost to, is to what? Our finance cost is how we finance our projects, the loan facilities we take, okay. the, the overdrafts we take, with the, what do you call it? Basically, it has to do with how we finance our projects under the suppliers' credits that we have and the loan facilities mm. that we take. I see. And then you also have very high distribution expenses. We'll put the books away for a little bit because I want us to talk about other issues to do with your operations. ECG has been subject to very uh, serious ransomware uh, in the last five years. Two of them happened under your tenure if I'm correct, in 2022 and 2023. Only one have, has happened. Uh, you know, I, I accept that in 2023, am I correct? As, uh, no, 2022. 2022. Uh, there was a ransomware. What makes your system vulnerable to ransomware? It's about having the requisite, uh, what do you call it, security systems, cyber security systems available to make sure that your systems are secure. One of the things that we, 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 we took for light when uh, I assumed office, when I realized it was that we had systems that operated a lot with had to do with uh, the internet and then cyber security and all of that, and we were quite laxed. As at the time I was assuming office, ECG didn't have a CISO, 
uh, uh, security expert in the cyberspace. Mm -hmm. As I speak to you now, we do have one. We are building a, a securities operations center, a SOC, to make sure that all of these things become a thing of the past. Mm, I see. And so the last ransom where you had, you told the public that it cost you 500 million uh, CDs. For the downtime, yes. For the downtime alone. How much did the attackers ask from ECG? We do not want to disclose that, but for purposes of, they just sent an email which had certain demands on it. That what what were the demands they were making of ECG? They, they, they shut down the system and they were asking us to perform some miracles in giving them some monies. But they never really contacted us. That's why we don't really want to speculate about it. Mm. And I, it's been some time now. I don't really want to speculate about it. That's all no, I'm you, you, won't be, you won't be speculating if you are the MD. I am the MD, but, but clearly I'm telling you I don't really want to talk about exactly what the demands were. How much? Because it's still an active investigation. Oh, I see. So I don't want to now sit here mm. on national TV and say, this was what they were asking for. This was how... That would be very reckless of me. How much did you pay to get the system back? We didn't pay anything. We rebuilt the system within a week. And I must say, take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all the industry players who assisted us and the staff who stayed overnight for us to rebuild the system from scratch. We didn't pay anything. ECG, through its resilience, rebuilt the system back. Is that, is that why we got a new app during that period? That, that was, no, the app was already going to happen. Okay. But it's, it's, it could, you could say it's an offshoot, but that's not the reason why. Mm. The app was something that was actually in the offing. How have you protected the system in such a way that you can assure the Ghanaian people that it won't happen again? That's why I told you that we've built a systems operations center. We are in the process of building a system operations mm -hmm. center. We now have a cybersecurity boss a CISO, who is in place to make sure that all of these things are following a certain meticulous step, mm. providing the requisite approvals for sectors that you can go in on the, on the network and parts that you can go in. So we are making sure that we are putting in the requisite uh, individuals or the requisite jobs to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Mm, I see. And you said that the downtime cost you $500 million. Yes. All that no, in, not dollars. Oh, 500 million cities. Yeah. All that in electricity use or not yes, use. Yes, so, so, non, so let, let's just say that was expected revenue to have come in. But if people are not vending within that whole period of that one week, then what money are you making? You're not making any money. Okay, I see. So for every downtime, for every downtime in your system, there's somebody knocking on the door to buy power. So mm. if that person doesn't buy, what then happens? They might do the illegal connection. I see. Speaking of downtime and non-use of electricity, have we begun to export power again? We have already, we have always been exporting power, but that would be spoken more on the VRA side. I believe they've been doing very, very well with uh, supporting our neighboring countries with some power to augment their, their, their needs. Indeed. Speaking of VRA, today we are hearing of measures between VRA, VRA and WePay pay power authority. Would that be helpful to ECG? As a power Honestly, we are distributors. We, I can't speak to the generation side of matters. And actually, I haven't fully seen the document that is suggesting that and the reasons behind it. Mm. So I would really like to decline any comment on that as to how... Because no matter what they generate, mm. that we are, our job is to distribute and bill and what? Collect. I can respect that. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Thank you too for having Samuel me. Samuel Dubik Mahama is Managing Director for Electricity Company uh, of Ghana. We've been discussing the air operations, revenue collections, and how uh, you sit in all of that. I am Kemeni Amano. This has been Hot Issues. I'll see you same time next week. Bye-bye.